in this tutorial we're going to cover the tool tab uh, we'll run through all the tools that are listed here I'm not going to go through every single one uh, for example sandbox interact unwrap and flatten we won't really cover and this export you probably won't have that tool either the rest of the tools will cover very quickly okay so in this first start with tools I'm going to go to select select is the space bar or it's this tool here select so just means if you draw a series of objects I'll make sure that they intersect for example okay so selecting stuff I can select individual lines or I can use a window so use the select tool again so these two types of selection windows so that the first one is from the top left to bottom right okay and you'll notice that the window itself is a solid line so it'll only select all the line work within that window and you'll notice it would have only selected those and excluded the faces however if I use the select tool again and I I left click once and drag in the opposite direction keeping the left click button in you'll find that everything that that cross line selects and what's within this window it will and you'll notice that the the selection window itself is dashed so that means that whatever it cuts and what's ever inside will be selected okay so just bear that in mind when you're selecting objects okay All right, so spacebar is the shortcut for that as well, but it's this command here. Okay, so that's the select tool. The next tool we're going to cover for is the erase tool, which is this little eraser over here. Okay, so I'm going to show you two, two methods, what the eraser does and where it's good to use. Because delete, if you select an object, you can use also use the delete key. But it can cause a few problems, especially... For example, if I had a block and I had some objects within a block, um, it might cause havoc. So I'll draw another block here very quickly. Pull this up. So I move this guy up a bit and I'm going to move it. So if these were intersecting, for example, okay, and I would want to delete whatever's left inside. So if I selected both of these blocks, I'm going to select everything, exclude him, right click, I'm going to say intersect faces with selection. So if I switch on dashed, you'll notice, well let me use the wireframe for now. You'll see that this, you actually want to clean out this internal line work, okay, so that you end up with one shape. You don't want all these bits of geometry lost in this in each one of these blocks so you actually want to clean it out so what's nice about the erase tool if you erase over a surface it won't delete the faces but if I went and erased in here for example I erase those two I erase those two for example and I erase this these two lines here you notice it's not deleting the faces or anything it's erasing the line work inside so that's where the erase tool is very powerful okay and what's what's nice now I'm left with a nice clean object Okay, so you'll notice if I use the erase tool again, for example, if I erase over something and it won't erase stuff that's in the in the background either. So whatever surface you're working on, it'll erase. So just to give you another example, if I had to draw a series of rectangles and on this face, and it's not going to delete anything in the background because what sometimes you'll be do you'll you'll select something like this, but you're also selecting surfaces in the background and faces in the background whereas the erase tool works only on the surface that you you're working with and you see it hasn't deleted anything in the background okay it will delete them however if you do set this to be x-ray for example now when you cross that line it will delete it okay so bear that in mind so make sure that that's off okay x-ray is off and when you're working on a surface for example Right, you can just use the erase tool with or E and you can actually get rid of those faces. Okay. Anyway, so I'll leave that there for the time being. I'll push this in just to give it a bit more detail. Okay. So that's the erase tool. Okay. Now the next tool, the paint bucket. Now the paint bucket tool is linked to the materials tray. Okay, so in this open up 
and um, this open up the materials tray okay so whatever material you have selected by default if you go to home and you say what's in model or you can you, if you go to home this is what's in the model already or if you click down and you say materials you get a basic list of materials so let's go and look at asphalt let's look at brick for example okay so I want to apply this brick for example so when you in the materials tray when you select an object the paint bucket tool gets active by, activated by default however if you're busy working you can just go and say so whatever materials currently in selection you can use a paint bucket tool then apply that material to faces okay so for example here I can go and find I'm looking for transparency or glass, glass or mirror. So I'm going to say transparent blue glass. Use my paint bucket again. And there, okay, you get the idea. All right, so that's the paint bucket tool in a nutshell. Okay. Spacebar goes back to select or ends the command. Okay, the next tool we're going to look at is the move tool. Okay, so we've discovered, we've talked about the move tool in a bit of detail, but I'll just use a little bit of uh, block to illustrate what the move tool does. Okay, this is the move tool here. So move is this tool here, move. So select a couple of objects that you want to move, go and click move, and it's asking you for a base point where to move from. So you can move it from point A to point B, for example. I'll right, do that again. Or if you use the move tool, you'll notice that there are there are toggles here, control and alt. Usually alt we don't use that often and um, control is your copy function okay so for example if I click the move tool and I click the origin that I want to use from and then I hit control once you'll notice now it's making a copy just remember use your arrow keys on your keyboard to force it in a direction so say now I wanted to copy this multiple times um, so my first option would be I want to copy this from this point to in this make it 2500 to that point but then before you press another key or command you're going to hit there the star button on your num on your keypad your numbers keypad section you're going to use the star button which means times and 10 for example it'll duplicate it by this distance 10 times okay I'll use a dimension for this then you'll so that's 2.5 meters and if I did the same here if I use this command again you'll notice that it's by the same distance every time okay all right so that is handy alternatively if I grab this block and I use the move command again press control and I move it right make it 30 meters away then I use the backslash key on my numbers keypad section and I, this is divide by 10 for example it will divide that by 10 okay so we did cover that in the class but just as a refresher that's how the move tool works get rid of these now there's another trick with the move tool that I want you to be aware of. You can, for example, if I want to start manipulating the shape of the square, for example, this rectangle, you can use the move tool by selecting one of the edges and then using the move tool and then it will move one of the edges up. Just remember, use the arrow keys to force it. If you don't use this, you'll notice that it'll try and subdivide the surfaces because technically they're no longer a flat surface. So SketchUp's trying to work out how that surface works. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so here I can use the Move tool to manipulate the shape. So for example, here I can grab this side, use my Move tool. Okay, here it's trying to force it because it's telling you that it has to split the surface up. So that's why sometimes it won't move, but in essence, I can move this one, for example, in the red direction. So you can see you can use the move tool quite a bit to manipulate shapes. Now, with nothing selected and you go to the move tool now, it will select nodes. So here it's trying to split the surface up. You see now it will actually move nodes, for example. Okay, so you can create some quite organic shapes. 
just using this move tool. Okay, so go to move tool again, nothing selected. Okay, so another way to use this tool quite effectively, if I've just got a square and you want to edit. So here you've got to say move, shape, etc. lock it on the green. However, click the move tool with nothing selected. Go to the move tool, now hover on one of the edges. You'll see that it moves the... So it identifies like a node but where the two lines meet and it allows you to manipulate that point. Okay, all right, so that's the move tool in a nutshell. Okay, the next tool we're going to look at is the rotate and scale. I'm going to create another block to illustrate this. So I'll get back to this in a minute. Okay. All right. So this is a, a block. Grab it all. I'm going to make it a group just so it's easier to handle. Now with the rotate tool. So the rotate tool is this tool over here. So rotate tool uses a protractor to kind of show you how it's going to rotate. So the first part of this tool is trying to find which axis you want to follow or what surface. So SketchUp was trying to find a surface to work with. So you, you notice that every time I hover on a on a face, the surface of one of the square is trying to align to it. That's very important. So for example, if I want to rotate it this way, you'll make sure it's always trying to type with the blue axis over here. And likewise with the move command call tool, you can use the control function. Okay, and you can use the times and divide options as well. Okay, so bear that in mind. What's also very neat about this tool, if I draw a rectangle on this face, it means that I can select this line work and I can rotate it within a face as well. So this is another little handy tool which works quite well. Okay. So it still means that it will extrude. Okay, you can go and select that stuff again, for example. And then you can use the rotate tool again. Okay, it's always asking for a base point. So here's a good example. It doesn't know what surface it needs to follow. So you need to force it using your arrow keys again onto the green axis. Okay, and then you can rotate it. Okay, so just remember the rotate tools, you need to force it to an axis to work around and you can use your arrow keys or you hover on a surface that you want to use to rotate with okay so you'll see that it's always trying to snap to a surface to use so just bear that in mind but what's also nice for example if I wanted to rotate this for example this face I'm going to need to use this as my my rotation angle so I'm going to use a rotate tool I'm going to left click and drag in a direction that I want so you left click on the origin and then you drag where you uh, what axis you want to follow now it will rotate okay there we go all right so that's how the rotate tool works okay the next tool is the scale tool okay the scale tool okay so what's nice about a scale tool, if I've got a basic rectangle, okay, so a basic rectangle, select the rectangle itself, use the scale tool, it gives you these nodes from which to work. And you can, it's, it's a quick way to manipulate the size of something that you've created, okay. But here's a caveat with scaling, okay. So you can scale something up. Or down to meet a certain dimension for example you can scale this up to meet this height over here so they're the same height now technically now the only problem with this command so you could use move for example to get the same effect okay but scaling so if I use a scale tool so if I select the top and I keep control down it will scale from the middle of the object and mirror the scale so that's something else to bear in mind. Okay. So use by using the control key, it flicks. Okay. And using the shift key scales everything uniformly. Okay. So control and the shift key. Okay. So alt does nothing in this, in this equation. But here, this is what you need to bear in mind with the scale tool. Say now, 
I had a couple openings, a draw, a door, a window, for example. Okay. Now I'll select the whole cube and now I'll scale again. Now look what happens. Everything scales along with it. So you would lose the correct size of a door and window if you use this function to scale. So scale, you've got to use um, quite deliberately. And I'm going to show you another method a bit further down when we use the push tool, push pull tool, how important and where to use the scale tool. But in essence, it's just a kind of demonstration of how this tool use, works. Okay, and using control again, we'll scale it from the middle and then shift will scale everything uniformly. Okay. And scale in opposite directions will also do the same. Okay, so because you see it gives you all these points to work with. You can scale things in this direction. So have a play at this tool. Okay, so that's the scale tool in a nutshell. Okay. Okay, now we get to the push-pull tool, which a lot of you are quite familiar with now. Push-pull tool just allows you to push objects and pull them and extend them. Now, if you use the control T key, it will duplicate the surface. So I'm going to show you where you're going to use the combination of the scale tool and the push-pull tool to make quite a complex shape. So I'm going to use a circle for this. I'm going to extrude the circle once. Okay, now I'm going to use the control key and you see there's a plus there and I'm going to extrude again. You see it's breaking this extrusion up into segments. Press control again and then extrude. Okay, and then press control again and extrude. Okay, now what is very neat is you've got these segments breaking up this, this extrusion. Okay, so now if I select the top surface and I use the scale tool now, okay, doesn't matter where I work from, and I keep control down, it'll scale it uniformly. Okay. Do that again. Let's grab the sides, control. Ah, now I can start making some. Use the push pull tool again. Here I can, so now I can select this middle ring, for example. Okay. I can use the scale tool again, use control. Okay, I can use the move tool now to move something up. Remember along the up. Okay. All right, so you can start making, just by using those basic tools together, you can see you can start making some organic shapes. All right, so that's where you would use the push-pull tool with the control function, and that's how you would use the, the stretch function as well. You can even make the shape more, you can make the shape more complex. Now using control and you can start. Okay, control again. So you can really push the boundaries with making some stuff quite organic shapes. Okay, all right, so that's that in a nutshell. Then you can select the whole thing and stretch it and. Okay. All right, so that's I use those tools in combination. Okay, the push pull tool with the scale tool. Okay, the next tool is the follow me tool. Now the follow me tool we've we have played around with a little bit. So again, I'm just going to show you how that works. So I'm going to make a circle here. Use the tape measure. Make a point up in space. Okay, I'm going to make another circle. I'm going to lock it on the red or green axis. Use that point. Okay, all right. So what we, we're going to use this shape to make a sphere. So what you do is you select this surface and use a follow me tool and you select the surface and it makes a circle. Okay, so that's one. That's how to use the follow me tool in one instance. I'm going to go to plan view and I'm going to make a bit of line work. So I'm going to go from there to there to there, to there. Okay, and I'm going to put some, I'm going to use, I'm going to put some arches in here. And then lock it purple and do likewise here. Use the erase tool, get rid of those. Okay, oh, wrong one, erase that one, that one. Okay, 
Now I've got a nice shape that I want to follow. So for example, here I'm going to draw a rectangle, but I'm going to lock it on green. So that's working on that green axis. Okay. And what I'm going to do is also, I'm going to use a tape measure for this, just so that I can get the arcs the same length on either side. Okay, so from there to there, and go purple on there, to there, make sure it's purple. Okay, erase. I'll make the shape a bit more complex now, and I'm going to cut out a rectangle here in the middle. Just so you can see, you can make, erase this. Okay, all right. This is my shape that I want to follow along here. So there's two ways to do this. So you can either select this line work, okay, and then use the follow me tool, then select the surface. Okay, that's the first way. Or you click the follow me tool, click the face, and then you start, and then it's trying to find the object to work along. However, this does cause errors from time to time. Okay, that's worked fine, but you'll find that sometimes it will cause some errors. Okay, I'm going to show you a very good example of when to use the follow me tool and how to use the erase tool to clean up. So I'm going to draw, this is my little house. Okay, erase this, pull this up. Okay, now if I want to build a roof truss on this, it's going to be quite tricky. Okay. So I'm going to draw in the middle here. I'm going to use my tape measure tool along here to find the center, lock it to the center, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. So from the middle until it hits there. Up, wrong. I need to go up vertically. Remember, use the up arrow. Okay. So now. I wanted to put a roof on this building very quickly. So I'm going to select the surface, I'm going to use a follow me tool, and voila. Okay, now it's done your roof for you, but the only problem is you need to get rid of, and if I show x ray, you'll see there's a lot of line work inside you that needs to be fixed. So, okay, with the x ray selected, I'm going to select everything, okay, get rid of the guides, okay, select everything, right click on the surfaces, you can go say intersect faces with selected. Okay, now I can use my erase tool and I can clear out all the stuff in the middle and inside that's no longer necessary. I can clear out all that, I can clear out that, clear out that, clear out that, okay, clear out all that, clear out that, clear out that, clear out that. Oops, I deleted something in the background, so let me just undo. Okay, oops, yeah, I'll just remember that. Get rid of all that stuff inside. Oh, there's a little bit there. Get rid of that guy. Ah, oh, that's looking better. Get rid of that guy. Get rid of that guy. Okay, get rid of that guy. 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 Rid of that guy. There we go. Done. Okay. All right, so that's a very quick way to put a pitched roof on your house, which is correct, because to model this takes time, it would have taken a lot of time, so just using the follow me tool is a very quick way to accomplish a roof structure, which is accurate, and it will be the same pitch all the way around, okay, so that's that, okay, so that's the follow me tool, okay, now the offset tool, so I'm just going to undo a bit, okay, so for example, the offset tool, how the offset Offset tool works. So, say now this is the shape of your house and you want to extrude walls. Okay, you're going to go and find the offset tool, which is this tool here. So, tools, offset tool, click on the offset tool. Now, it asks you for a face to offset. So, I'm going to select this face. So, you left click once and then you drag. You can either type in the where that's asking for a distance. So, you can put in 230 for a standard brick wall, or you can make it 330. So, it's got a cavity. 330, there's the offset, and then you can use the push-pull tool again and get rid of, and now you've got your walls, okay? I can do it on this facade, for example, on the surface, so I'm going to go and say offset tool, so select this face here, drag and drop, okay, and then push-pull through, okay? So that's a 
cool little tool to do to generate walls and that from okay or what you can use it for is I'm just going to use a rectangle clean the face out okay make sure there's no face select all the line work then use the offset tool again and then drag uh, should have worked offset offset tool should offset. Let's make sure it's flat. Mm -hmm. right. Make sure it's not closed. Select everything. Offset. There we go. Okay. I think it'll work with a closed object as well. So select everything. Say offset, and then select the one side. Sorry. So select all the line work that you want to offset. Then you use the offset tool. Select an edge. Click once and then click once to activate the command and then put in the offset distance so you can type it in for example so i'm going to make this 1500 offset there we go it's created an offset of that object okay if you wanted to make the surface again use the line tool and just quickly join one of the edges join another edge and you'll see it'll start making a surface you have to do one or two for it to get it going and you can get rid of those internal ones and use the push pull tool and then you, you can generate a shape okay so that's how that works. Okay. Ah, now the outer shell tool. All right. So what the outer shell tool does, it combines two blocks into one and generates an outer shell of those two blocks. Okay. So I'm going to just use two cubes for this. For example, I'm going to draw this up, push, pull it, make this a group. Okay. Move the groups. And press control to copy it I'm going to say it into six there for example use the scale tool okay select it around the center okay all right now I'm gonna make these two one group so these is multiple groups within one group but what this allows you to do now if I use this x-ray mode or x-ray mode for example let's just use x-ray mode you notice that these surfaces don't intersect each other correctly and are not cleaned down. So in essence, the outer shell tool will make an outer shell of this example. So I'm going to grab this guy, move control, copy it. So I'll show you the difference between what it looks like before and after. So if I select these two and I select these two groups together and I go to tools and I say outer shell. And then I can say um, explode. And then I can say explode again if you want to. Now you see that they're all, it makes it and intersects. Those. So you can take multi, um, complex objects, put them together in different groups and use the outer shell tool to generate one shape. Okay. So it's, it skipped a whole lot of process of using intersect and erasing faces inside. It works out how these, these faces work. Okay. Explode again. You know, you can manipulate them. So this is, it is a great tool to use if you want to explore how different shapes together come together and then generate an outer shell of it and then work them up from there on. So use control and then use the scale tool, for example, or control. Yeah, so it's a very handy tool to kind of get the process going so it's it saves you a lot of steps trying to erase where things intersect etc okay so that's that tool in a nutshell okay okay the next tools we're going to cover quite quickly is the tape measure which we've been using quite a bit so tape measure you can just use it to work on a surface and then you can use it to okay the tape measure tool you can put in dimensions so from that side you can type in 1500 and it will offset it from 1500 to from there to there and you can also measure stuff with it okay so where else is the tape measure used so now i want to scale this whole entire model i want to scale so let's take a dimension from there to there so now i bought this model in from somewhere else and it's the incorrect scale this dimension needs to be 16 meters 16 meters or 16,000 millimeters. All right, so you can use a tape measure tool. So you're going to select from there and select to the other side, click again. Now you just simply type 16,000. 
and it'll scale. And it's going to ask you, must does it have to rescale the whole model? And you say yes, and then it's fixed the whole model. Okay, so if I go and measure now, it's 16,000. But remember, whatever else was in this model gets scaled at the same time. Okay, to get around this, I'm going to grab this information and make a group and move this group and press Control to copy it. So say now, this block, this dimension needs to be, so let's grab this dimension from there to there. Okay, so now I want this 12,000, but I don't want to affect everything else in this model. So you make sure it's a group, and within the group, you use your tape measure tool again. So you're going to click once, and then click at the end what you want to scale. Now you type in 12,000, for example, and enter. Now it's going to tell you, ah, oh, it's going to rescale just, just this block, and it won't rescale the model. So if I go and use the dimension tool now, okay, so that's another way to use the tape measure tool. Cool. All right, so I'm explored. So the tape measure tool is used to measure. It's used to create guides for each to for which you to work from. Okay, and it's used to scale your model. Okay, that's very important. Okay, the next tool we're going to look at is the protractor tool. Okay, so the protractor tool basically it works like the rotate command. So for example, say now I want to Make sure I move this this pitch of this structural roof here needs to be a certain degree. Okay, so here I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use the green, make sure it's locked in green. So I'm going to say, I want to say from here to there needs to be 15 degrees. 15 degrees. Okay, so that's 15 degrees. Okay, that might be a bit. Let's do that again. So use my... Yep, from there to there, let's make it 45. Okay, so that's 45 degrees. Okay, so you can use this to create guides of 45 degrees so that you make sure that you can get these, these edges to be 45 degrees. So if I went and used the scale tool again, control. Now I can lock it onto this guide and it'll be 45 degrees. Okay. All right, so what you might have to do here, I've just realized you need to look at it from the side. I'm going to use the tape measure tool here. Okay, so it creates and use the up key to lock it. Okay, because we're working in 3D, just remember that the perspective is causing havoc here. So you're going to use scale tool again grab the side shift and then you can say where it intersects okay that's going to be perfectly 45 degrees and it did it both ways okay or you wanted to extrude you wanted to you know extrude a piece of this face away at like a degree so you can use the protract again remember it's also like the rotate tool trying to find a surface to work on so here i'm going to say so let's say from there to there, I want it 70 degrees. Okay, now I can use draw a line from there to there, and then I can pull this away. Okay. All right, so that's that's the protractor tool in a, in a nutshell. Okay. The next couple of tools are we don't use them that much, but Feel free to play with them. The, the first one is the dimension tool, which is this tool over here. It allows you to measure your model. Okay. And the, they're always visible in 3D. So you can use the dimension tool again to maybe show this from there to there. Okay. Dimension from there to there. And then dimension from there to, oops, from dimension there to there there okay or you can use the text tool it will give you the length of that line by default but you can overwrite this and you can say this is a line okay and then it's always visible okay that's how those tools work. Oops. 
get rid of those, delete all those, okay. The 3D text, um, this tool um, in my version does not work for some reason. I have tried and it just doesn't want to work. So maybe if you have better luck, I'll show you how that works, but it doesn't work in mine. So that's a pity. Yep, yeah, no, doesn't want to work. Okay. Okay, tools. Okay, so, okay, the axis we've covered somewhere else. So I'm not going to worry about that. 3D text, I'm not, okay, the last tool we're going to look at, the rest of these we'll cover their more advanced um, topics is the section tool. Okay, now the section tool, you also have to, if you right click on any blank space along where you've got your toolbars, you can go and add um, your section toolbars if you wanted to, okay. So you can say sections, sorry, um, sections, add my sections. Okay, if you want to work with sections and so tools, you're going to go to, um, I see it does not get listed here. It gets listed on this little tool here for sections itself, but it's listed in the tool section, so section plane. So all this does, once again, like the protractor and the rotate tools, trying to work off a surface. So if I want to cut this model up into little sections, I'll select this face here, grab the section line, use the move tool, and then move it where I want the section to happen. Okay. All right. So I can do, I can create another one, but this tool does the same thing. This is to show this, the sections, to hide the section. This is my section tool here in essence. I want to go along this way. Okay. Now these sections work view specific. So if you want to cut this up in multiple sections, I'll show you in a later video how you use your scenes to show which, so if you double click on the section, that one will become the active section, okay. And you can switch them off all together and hide them, okay. All right, but that's, that's it in a, in a nutshell. Thank you.